What is going on everyone? Welcome to another video from Feature Tech. In this video, I'm going to be doing my one year review on the Soundcore LifeQ20 headphones. Now, before we get deep into the video, make sure to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Let's get into it. I'm going to begin with comfort and these headphones for the most part have been very comfortable to use. The most time I've used these headphones were about an hour and a half. Uh, I would say almost two hours. I used these to watch a movie and they were very comfortable. I didn't have a lot of discomfort after removing the headphones and they, they're really great. Now, one thing you should keep in mind with these headphones is the internal gap for your ear is not as big as the next step up, which is the Light Q30 headphones. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit of a difference. Let me just put them together next to each other here. Now, as you can see, there is definitely a bigger internal gap for your ear than the Life Q20 headphones that you get with the Life Q30 headphones. So keep that in mind, but as a person with a big head, which means I have big ears, it did not bother me at all. And I was still able to use these headphones for a decent period of time without any discomfort. Next, I wanna talk about controls, which is one of the things I really wasn't a fan of from the first day that I purchased these headphones. The controls stick out like a sore thumb and they're just very cheaply made, as you can hear. It's not good, I really don't like that. But I really didn't get to use the controls much anyway. I would say over the year that I've had these headphones, I would say I used the controls about four, maybe five times. And that's pretty much it. And that's because when you turn on the headphone, the noise cancellation is already activated and I prefer that the noise cancellation be already activated. So I never needed to toggle the on and off for the noise cancellation. And then when it came to volume and the pause button, I always controlled these things from my iPhone. So I never really cared that much about utilizing the controls. When it comes to pros, there are a few things that I love about these headphones. First, the price. This headphone goes anywhere from $50 to $60, depending if you want a soft or a hard shell case. Also, the sound quality for these headphones is just really good, again, when you consider the price point. These feature the bass up technology, so if you're a person that appreciates songs with bass, these headphones are a great budget-friendly option for that. Another thing I like about these headphones and hasn't let me down in the year of use is the battery life. Now this headphone is supposed to get 40 hours of battery life with noise cancellation turned on and 60 hours of battery life with noise cancellation turned off. Now, 99% of the time I did use the headphones with noise cancellation activated. And because of that, I got around, I would say 38, uh, really, I, would, I really would stick to the 40 hours of battery life. I didn't see any significant uh, reduction in the battery life that they advertised. And I was really impressed by that because I, I thought over time the battery would wear out eventually and I did not notice that whatsoever. Moving on now to what I didn't like about the headphones, beginning with the build quality, like I mentioned with the controls, this headphone really does feel like it was cheaply built and it's not very sturdy. So if you're trying to be very flexible with the headphones, I can't imagine that they're gonna last very long. Also, the mic quality for these headphones isn't the best. I've had multiple times where I'm talking to people using these headphones and they cannot hear me, my voice is cutting in and out, and I'm just simply in my office or outside in a place, in an environment that's not windy, and they still can't hear me. So it's just a bit disappointing with the microphone. Now, as far as the static, I when I first purchased these headphones, one of the main issues that occurred was the static noise at max volume. And after that replacement, that static noise went away, which is great. The final thing I don't like about the LifeQ20 headphones is the fact that it still utilizes a micro USB cable to charge. Now I understand these came out a couple years ago, but it's just still annoying. And clearly I'm not the only one that complained about this because when they came out with the LifeQ30 headphones, you can now utilize a micro USB-C cable to charge the headphone. And that is a lot more convenient than a micro USB cable. So this was my one year review video on the Soundcore Light Q20 headphones. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Hope you have a great day. Take care.